Tombstone, Arizona, one of the most infamous towns in American history. From vicious feuds to brutal gunfights, Tombstone was not a place for the faint of heart. In many ways, it was the epicenter of the Old West. But what do you really know about Wyatt Earp's legendary haunt? How did it start? And how did it end? Saddle up, because we're about to take you through the wild and gritty history of Tombstone, Arizona. In the late 1800s, the Arizona desert stretched vast and uncharted, shrouded in tales of wild natives and treacherous terrain that deterred most would-be explorers. Yet in 1877, a determined prospector named Ed Sheffelin boldly defied these ominous warnings. As he ventured through the harsh landscape of southeast Arizona territory, local soldiers often mocked his quest for silver. Their jeers would echo, Out there, the only stone you'll find will be your tombstone. But Ed, driven by an unwavering spirit, pressed on undeterred. Then, on one fateful day amid the rocky outcrops and sun-baked soil, Ed stumbled upon a gleaming silver vein, silencing his doubters once and for all. This remarkable discovery was promptly christened the Tombstone Mine, a triumphant retort to those who had cautioned him against the perilous journey. News of Sheffelin's find spread like wildfire, drawing miners, fortune seekers, and opportunists from far and wide. Makeshift homes, tents, and wooden structures sprang up, and from the once desolate desert, a bustling town emerged. Tombstone became a boom town in every sense, with its population skyrocketing into the thousands within just a few short years. However, as Tombstone flourished, so did its insatiable appetite for vice and violence. The influx of wealth attracted an unsavory element, and the town's dusty streets witnessed the rapid rise of saloons, gambling dens, and brothels. These establishments were often frequented by some of the most notorious figures of the Old West, and with little law enforcement to maintain order, disputes were frequently settled with gunfights rather than words. This initial period in Tombstone's history not only marked a haven of fortune and dreams, but also set the stage for a tumultuous future where crime, passion, and wild western tales would become the town's hallmark. The town, initially established as a defiant response to skeptics, would eventually come to symbolize the perilous, unpredictable, and legendary era of the Wild West. As Tombstone's streets began to pulse with the hopeful energy of new arrivals, the town underwent a rapid transformation from a modest mining camp into the vibrant heart of the Arizona desert. The irresistible allure of silver was undeniable, and by the early 1880s, Tombstone was churning out millions in silver bullion. This rapid infusion of wealth didn't just bestow overnight millionaire status upon a fortunate few prospectors. It also morphed the town into a bustling center of commerce, culture, and, regrettably, crime. Tombstone proudly flaunted some of the most cutting-edge amenities of its time. Equipped with its very own opera house, a bustling bowling alley, newspapers, and a whopping number of over a hundred saloons, it was clear that Tombstone had transcended its origins as a mundane mining town. It had evolved into a place where Eastern refinement converged with Western ruggedness. As capital continued to flow into the town, it attracted a diverse array of businessmen, lawyers, and even international investors, all eager to claim their share of its burgeoning prosperity. The moniker City of Roses, an occasional reference stemming from its thriving red light district, spread far and wide, entertainers and theatrical troupes frequently included Tombstone in their travel circuits, bringing with them a dash of glamour and cosmopolitan sophistication. Yet, despite all its opulence, and the increasing sophistication it enjoyed, Tombstone remained a town with a dual nature. Tombstone remained intimately tied to its wild, lawless origins as it gained prominence. With the town's growing reputation came an expanding roster of infamous residents. The Earp brothers, Wyatt, Virgil, and Morgan, alongside the deadly sharpshooter Doc Holliday, achieved widespread recognition. However, 
Their fame extended beyond their roles as lawmen, largely due to their involvement in the Old West's most legendary gunfight, the infamous shootout at the O.K. Coral. Frequent clashes between outlaw factions and law enforcement were a common occurrence. The ongoing tensions between the notorious group of outlaws known as the Cowboys and figures like the Earp Brothers set the stage for a volatile atmosphere where violence was always looming just around the corner. Duels of ideologies, territorial disputes, and personal vendettas frequently unfolded in broad daylight, and the streets of Tombstone often bore witness to these perilous confrontations more times than its residents would have preferred. Tombstone's swift ascent to prominence presented a paradoxical tale. On the one hand, it shone as a symbol of progress and prosperity within the unforgiving desert terrain. Simultaneously, it retained its status as an emblem of the unpredictable and perilous existence of the Wild West, where a precarious equilibrium between law and chaos reigned, and fortunes hung in the balance with the mere pull of a trigger. The story of Tombstone is intricately woven with the dramatic events and tensions that defined its enduring legacy. From fierce feuds to devastating fires, let's embark on a detailed exploration of the pivotal moments that etched this town's notoriety into the annals of history. The gunfight at the O.K. Corral, 800A1. The gunfight at the O.K. Corral, a legendary showdown etched into the tapestry of the Old West, deserves a closer look. This pivotal event, lasting a mere 30 seconds of intense gunfire, is an iconic chapter in the annals of Tombstone's history. The repercussions of this fateful clash were nothing short of monumental, leaving an indelible mark on the town and its inhabitants. In the heart of this dramatic confrontation were Wyatt Earp, his brothers, and their unwavering ally, Doc Holliday. Their opponents were none other than a notorious gang of outlaws known as the Cowboys, led by the enigmatic Ike Clanton. When the billowing smoke finally cleared and the echoes of gunfire faded, it was a grim tableau that remained. Three members of the Cowboys gang lay dead, an outcome that would solidify the Earps and Holiday as enduring figures in the rich tapestry of Wild West folklore. However, the aftermath of this intense shootout was far from the end of the story. In fact, it sowed the seeds for further conflict and turmoil. Retaliatory attacks and a vicious cycle of violence would ensue, casting a shadow over Tombstone and perpetuating the legends born on that fateful day at the O.K. Corral. The Godfather of the Old West Newman Haynes Clanton, a man often referred to as Old Man Clanton, left his mark on the tumultuous history of the Arizona Territory in the late 19th century. His journey from a former Confederate home guardsman to a rancher in this rugged and unforgiving land is a story steeped in both intrigue and infamy. After the American Civil War, Clanton ventured westward, drawn by the promise of open spaces and opportunities. However, his path took a dark turn, and he gained notoriety as both a thief and a murderer. Clanton's reputation as a dangerous man soon spread throughout the region, and his name struck fear into the hearts of many. Clanton's influence extended beyond his criminal activities. He was the patriarch of the infamous Cochise County Cowboys, a group known for its lawlessness and disregard for authority. Clanton's ranch, which served as their headquarters, became a hub for a motley crew of known outlaws and desperados. These individuals found refuge in the shadow of Old Man Clanton, and his ranch was a place where they could plan their illicit activities with impunity. His role as a central figure in the Cochise County Cowboys and his association with the events leading up to the gunfight at the O.K. Corral ensure that his name remains forever intertwined with the wild and lawless history of Tombstone, Arizona Territory. Among Old Man Clanton's four sons, two of them, Ike and Billy, made a name for themselves through their active participation in a life of crime. Their criminal endeavors ranged from theft to smuggling and even murder. Interestingly, both of these brothers found themselves entangled in the infamous gunfight at the O.K. Corral, 
marking a significant chapter in their notorious lives. Overshadowed. While many tend to associate Wyatt Earp as the key figure in the feud between the Earps and the Cowboys in Tombstone, it's worth noting that his brother Virgil played a pivotal role. Virgil was, in fact, the first member of the Earp family to make his way to Tombstone when he assumed the position of the town's deputy marshal in 1879. Interestingly, when it came to law enforcement experience, Virgil actually had more under his belt than his more renowned brother Wyatt. It was Virgil who eventually led his brothers and Doc Holliday down to the corral during that fateful time. The Bisbee Massacre, 1883. In the late 1800s, Tombstone and the surrounding region were no strangers to violence and lawlessness. Just a short ride from Tombstone, in the nearby town of Bisbee, a horrifying and tragic event unfolded that sent shockwaves throughout the entire region. This gruesome incident involved a gang of ruthless criminals who brazenly robbed a general store in Bisbee. However, what set this crime apart from the typical acts of robbery was the sheer brutality that accompanied it. In their quest for ill-gotten gains, the members of this gang didn't limit themselves to theft alone. Instead, they callously took the lives of four innocent individuals, including a pregnant woman. The brutality of their actions sent shockwaves throughout the entire region, leaving the community in a state of disbelief and horror. The atrocity of this event prompted a massive manhunt, with law enforcement officials and concerned citizens alike determined to bring the perpetrators to justice. The pursuit of these criminals was relentless. As the manhunt unfolded, many of the culprits responsible for this shocking crime were ultimately captured. The wheels of justice turned swiftly in Tombstone, as the town had already earned a reputation as a place where both justice and vengeance were often meted out with a sense of urgency. In this case, several members of the criminal gang were tried and subsequently sentenced to the ultimate punishment, hanging. Old wounds still bleed. Even though more than 15 years had passed since the conclusion of the Civil War, its lingering impact continued to cast a shadow over the town of Tombstone in the 1880s. The conflict that had torn the nation apart still had the power to divide people within this community. Among the residents of Tombstone, including Wyatt Earp and his brothers, the majority hailed from northern states. In contrast, the ranchers residing in the rural outskirts of the town, notably the notorious cowboys, held strong sympathies for the Confederate cause. This stark contrast in loyalties and backgrounds created a palpable tension that simmered beneath the surface, serving as a constant reminder of the deep-seated divisions that had marked the nation's history not too long ago. Schieflin vs. Friday Williams While the mines in the vicinity of Tombstone were in the process of development, Ed Schieflin and his newfound business partners found themselves entangled in a legal dispute. It all began when two individuals by the names of Ed Williams and Jack Friday stumbled upon a fresh silver vein while in pursuit of a stray mule. Upon staking their own claim to this discovery, Schieflin and his associates contended that this new claim encroached upon their original one. After due consideration, a judge ultimately ruled in favor of Friday and Williams' claim, a decision that left Schieflin less than thrilled. In response, he humorously named the remaining part of his claim contention. It seems he may have had a bit of playful sarcasm in mind when choosing that name. That's entertainment. Tombstone boasted an unexpectedly lively nightlife scene for a booming town situated in such a remote location. Recognizing the miners' need for entertainment during their off hours, savvy entrepreneurs were more than eager to cater to their demands. The town played host to multiple theaters and saloons that remained open around the clock, offering a wide array of malt beverages and imported wines to patrons. In addition, many restaurants took pride in serving seafood that had been transported all the way from the West Coast in specially refrigerated train cars. Strike. In the year 1880, Tombstone had grown to a population of 10,000 people, and it was already reaping the advantages commonly found in much larger American cities. 
Interestingly enough, the town even boasted its very own bowling alley. While it's a bit difficult to picture iconic figures like Wyatt Earp or Doc Holliday passing the time with a game of ten-pin, it's perhaps understandable why this particular detail is often left out in the movies. Tombstone's Infernos Between 1881 and 1882, Tombstone faced a different kind of challenge, devastating fires. These fires were just as menacing as bullets in their own way. In the short span of a single year, the town was ravaged by two major blazes that left businesses and homes in ruins. Yet, despite the adversity, the residents displayed remarkable resilience. They rolled up their sleeves and began the arduous task of rebuilding, demonstrating that the indomitable spirit of Tombstone could withstand even the fury of nature, body fun. Back in December 1881, Lottie and William Hutchinson introduced Tombstone to the Bird Cage Theater, a grand Victorian structure initially intended for wholesome family entertainment. However, the presence of minors as the primary audience soon led the theater down a different path, focusing on more risque delights. The Bird Cage's lineup included comedians, cross dressing performers, and an impressive strong woman named Mademoiselle de Granville renowned for her remarkable feat of lifting heavy objects with her teeth. What really set the Birdcage Theater apart was its role in hosting the longest poker game in American history. To get a seat at the table, participants had to cough up a hefty upfront fee of $1,000. Once they were in, the game ran nonstop, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. A cast of illustrious gamblers took their turns over the years, including the likes of Wyatt Earp, Doc Holliday, Diamond Jim Brady, and George Hurst, the father of William Randolph Hearst. Incredibly, this poker marathon endured for a staggering eight years, from 1881 to 1889. When the final hand was dealt, an astonishing sum of over $10 million had exchanged hands across the table, blue murder. Back in March 1881, a stagecoach departed from Tombstone, transporting a hefty cargo of silver bullion valued at approximately $26,000, equivalent to roughly $700,000 in today's currency. Tragically, it never reached its intended destination, as it fell victim to a vicious attack by three cowboys during its journey. Eli Bud Philpot the stagecoach driver, and a passenger by the name of Peter Rorig both met a grim fate, succumbing to gunshot wounds inflicted during the assault. Upon learning of this daring robbery, Deputy U.S. Marshal Virgil Earp and his brothers took it upon themselves to track down those responsible, setting the Earps on an inevitable collision course with the cowboys, fire and water. The silver mining boom that played a pivotal role in the establishment of Tombstone turned out to be a fleeting phenomenon, concluding far sooner than anyone had anticipated. Signs of trouble emerged as early as 1880 when water infiltration into the mines became an issue. Although mining operations managed to persist for a brief period, the silver ore deposits were ultimately inundated by 1882. In spite of the challenges posed by the flooded mines, both the mining companies and the town's residents remained determined not to concede defeat. They took the initiative to bring in Cornish engines, which were instrumental in pumping vast quantities of water out of the mines, rendering them operational once more. By the year 1884, an astonishing 576,000 gallons of water were being extracted from the mines within a 24-hour period. However, this Herculean effort came to an unfortunate halt when the pumping plant suffered a devastating fire in 1886. Regrettably, the damage inflicted upon the pumping plant proved irreparable, and coupled with the declining market value of silver, the mining industry never managed to recapture the levels of prosperity it had once enjoyed during its heyday. The Fall of the Clantons if you've been curious about the fate of old man Clanton and his remaining sons, we have the story for you. Approximately two months prior to the infamous O.K. Corral showdown, old man Clanton found himself in a fateful encounter. 
while he was herding stolen cattle in Mexico, he was ambushed by federales. Tragically, Clanton met his demise during this ambush as he was shot and killed while in the midst of cooking breakfast, ultimately collapsing into the very cook fire he had kindled. As for Ike, he could be considered the fortunate one among the Clanton family as he managed to survive both the OK Corral confrontation and the tumultuous Erp Vendetta ride. However, fate eventually caught up with him in 1887. During an incident involving cattle theft, a constable confronted Ike, leading to a fatal confrontation where he was shot while attempting to resist arrest. Who killed Johnny Ringo? Johnny Ringo was one of the cowboys who joined Sheriff Johnny Behan's posse in their pursuit of the Earps and their allies following the O.K. Corral incident. However, contrary to the portrayals often seen in movies, Ringo was not leading the posse, and his end did not come in a dramatic shootout. In fact, the circumstances surrounding his death continue to shroud it in mystery to this day. On July 14, 1882, Ringo's lifeless body was discovered near a tree trunk in the Arizona Territory, bearing a gunshot wound to his temple. The case was officially ruled as a suicide, and he was laid to rest not too far from the location where his body was found. While many historians tend to lean towards the theory of Ringo's suicide, a persistent belief suggests that he might not have been the one wielding the fatal weapon. Instead, the prime suspects in his demise, as you might have guessed, are none other than the Earp brothers. This suspicion grew, in part, due to the events following the killing of Morgan Earp, which led the Earps to suspect Ringo's involvement. Adding to the intrigue, Wyatt Earp himself boasted about being the one who took down Ringo. However, Earp's recollection of events didn't quite match the circumstances of Ringo's discovery and he did have a tendency to embellish the truth. On the other hand, Doc Holliday might have been a plausible candidate, but here's the catch. He was located all the way over in Colorado just six days before Ringo's body was found. Considering that he was already wanted for murder in Arizona, it seems a bit far-fetched that he would make the journey back just to confront Ringo and leave him lifeless against that tree. Curly Bill among the infamous Cochise County Cowboys, few were as notorious as William Curly Bill Brocius. Similar to Johnny Ringo, Brocius had a reputation for extreme violence when under the influence of alcohol. His drunken escapades included disrupting a community dance and coercing people to dance in the nude. He even fired live rounds at a preacher's feet to make him dance while delivering a sermon. On October 28, 1880, a drunken Brocious and his associates were recklessly firing their weapons in Tombstone when they crossed paths with Fred White, the town marshal, and Wyatt Earp. White attempted a peaceful disarmament of Brocious, but in the process, he accidentally triggered Brocious's pistol, hitting the marshal in the groin. According to Earp, he swiftly subdued Brocious by pistol-whipping him and placing him under arrest. During Brocious's trial for the shooting of Tombstone Marshal Fred White, he expressed deep remorse, particularly since he had a personal liking for White. Brocious insisted that the shooting had been a tragic accident. Strangely enough, White himself testified that Brocious had not intended to shoot him. While White ultimately succumbed to his wound, this testimony led to Brocious's exoneration in court. However, Curly Bill... Brocious met his infamous end at the hands of Wyatt Earp during the Earp Vendetta ride. Encountering a group of cowboys, including Brocious, at their camp near Iron Springs, a deadly confrontation erupted. As everyone reached for their weapons and exchanged gunfire, Earp dismounted and walked steadily into the midst of the chaos, shotgun in hand. Despite Brocious's frantic shots, Earp advanced and with a single devastating blast from his shotgun, nearly cut Brocious in half. Remarkably, despite being fired upon by multiple adversaries, Earp miraculously emerged from the encounter completely unharmed. The Earp Vendetta Ride After the infamous gunfight at the O.K. Corral, a series of events unfolded that became known as the Earp Vendetta Ride in 1882. 
This dark chapter began with Virgil Earp being ambushed and seriously wounded, and it reached its tragic climax when Morgan Earp was ruthlessly assassinated. Fueled by anger and a thirst for retribution, Wyatt Earp, along with Doc Holliday and their ally Ike Clanton, set out on a relentless pursuit of those they believed were responsible for these acts. Their relentless pursuit resulted in several deaths, blurring the already thin lines between seeking justice and exacting revenge. This violent vendetta only served to further divide public opinion about the Earp brothers and their actions during this tumultuous time. The tensions with the Apaches. Tombstone's expansion faced challenges not only from internal conflicts, but also from external threats, particularly tensions with the Apache tribes in the surrounding territories. As settlers encroached on Apache lands, it ignited a series of skirmishes, raids, and escalating tensions between the two groups. These encounters with Apache tribes became woven into the fabric of Tombstone's history, contributing an additional layer of danger and uncertainty to life in the town, political undercurrents, and corruption. Amidst the boom of Tombstone, political maneuvering and power struggles were as common as the bustling streets. Surprisingly, even the Earps, despite their law enforcement roles, often found themselves entangled in disputes with local authorities and influential business figures. Accusations of corruption, bribery, and the abuse of power were frequent occurrences. These political undercurrents didn't merely serve as a backdrop, they played a pivotal role in shaping the town's major events and further dividing its residents. Within the crucible of the Arizona desert, Tombstone's destiny was continuously molded and remolded by these complex events and tensions. They brought both fame and infamy, prosperity and peril to its vibrant streets, solidifying its status as one of the most legendary and iconic places of the Wild West era. The compelling history of Tombstone gains even more significance when you take into account the trials and tribulations it endured, stemming from both natural forces and human-caused disasters. The Great Fires of Tombstone In the span of just one year, Tombstone was struck by two devastating fires, the initial one, igniting in June 1881 within a local saloon, rapidly engulfed the town, consuming over 60 businesses. The townspeople had scarcely begun recovering when another inferno, erupting in May 1882, wrought havoc and obliterated a significant portion of Tombstone's commercial district. Nevertheless, the indomitable spirit of its residents shone through as they valiantly rebuilt after each calamity. Flash floods. The desert's monsoon rains can be perilous, and Tombstone, nestled in a valley, was particularly vulnerable to abrupt and severe flash floods. Streets would swiftly transform into torrents, with many structures, especially hastily erected ones, being either swept away or severely damaged. These floods not only resulted in immediate devastation, but also contaminated essential drinking water sources, leading to widespread health issues. Mining Accidents Tombstone's very existence was intricately tied to its silver mines, yet these mines were also fraught with numerous tragedies. Mining during the 1880s proved to be a hazardous undertaking, marked by cave-ins, gas explosions, and flooding within the underground tunnels, which were far from uncommon occurrences. The pursuit of silver claimed the lives of numerous miners, while others suffered enduring health problems due to the perilous working conditions. Typhoid Outbreak In 1882, Tombstone grappled with a severe typhoid fever outbreak, its impact exacerbated by the absence of clean drinking water following the floods and the high population density. A significant number of individuals fell ill, and tragically, many succumbed to this dreaded disease. This outbreak served as a stark reminder of the formidable challenges associated with upholding public health in a rapidly expanding frontier town, saloon shootouts, and street duels. While not constituting a disaster in the traditional sense, the town's chaotic ambiance was significantly influenced by the frequent outbreaks of violence. Altercations originating from poker games or personal disputes often escalated into gunfights, 
resulting in casualties among bystanders, damaged property, and an overall sense of unrest. Economic downturns. Beyond the immediate physical perils, Tombstone navigated through economic downturns that posed formidable challenges. The fluctuating value of silver, coupled with the late 1880s declining ore quality and increased extraction costs, rendered numerous mines financially unviable. This unfortunate turn of events precipitated closures, widespread job losses, and a substantial exodus of residents who sought their fortunes in other locales. From silver mines, to silver screens. As the silver mines dwindled and the town endured devastating fires, Tombstone experienced a rapid decline in its population. By 1890, the once thriving community, which had boasted around 14,000 residents at its zenith, had dwindled to a mere sign hundred. A decade later, this number plummeted further, with as few as 700 inhabitants remaining. It seemed as thou Tom Stoney was on the verge of vanishing entirely, were it not for the enduring legend of the Old West, which found a lifeline through the silver screen. Tourism emerged as Tombstone's saving grace, although it never quite matched the prosperity once enjoyed through silver mining. The town's historic appeal drew visitors from far and wide, with the iconic gunfight at the O.K. Corral often reenacted by skilled actors. Portions of the Old West town were meticulously reconstructed as tourist attractions, preserving the spirit of a bygone era. In 2005, CNN reported that Tombstone continued to attract approximately 450,000 tourists each year, ensuring its enduring place as a testament to the Wild West's captivating legacy. In the annals of the Old West, Tombstone, Arizona, has etched its name as a town of legends, where the line between history and myth blurs. From the tumultuous days of the Earp Cowboy feud to the dramatic rise and fall of its silver fortunes, Tombstone's story continues to captivate us. But what do you think is the most fascinating aspect of Tombstone's history? Was it the larger-than-life characters like Wyatt Earp, the infamous gunfights, or the relentless spirit of its residents? Share your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more intriguing tales from the Wild West. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.